Hello everyone, welcome back to Chinmoy's biology channel. So today we are here back with a new episode of Reaching the Age of Adolescence. So many of you have requested to start this lesson. I have already posted this lesson in ICSC, that is what is puberty and adolescence. So this is today for eight uh, CBSC students. If you have not yet gone through that part, please do go through today's uh, portion, which will be as per your CBSC curriculum and I'll be following your NCRT book. So let's get started. Stay tuned, stay subscribed to my channel and don't skip my lesson in between. So you should see throughout the episode as many informative things are there in middle as well. So let's get started. Now, today we are starting your seventh lesson that is reaching the age of adolescence. So now you all are in eighth standard. So you have already reached the age of adolescence. So we should know that and we should study what all the changes are happening in our body during this stage. Okay. So during in the previous chapter, I hope you already have gone through how do animals reproduce. It is only after growing up to a certain age that human beings and many other animals can reproduce, right? So why can uh, humans reproduce only after certain age? So this is a question in our mind why it is such that. So in this chapter, you will learn about the changes that takes place in human body after a person becomes capable of reproduction, right? So we will study it today. In chapter 6, we have already studied about the reproductive organs. Here we will discuss the role of hormones playing in bringing about the changes that make the child grow into an adult so now it is the phase your body is gradually changing from child to adult so these changes are happening in a phase that is called adolescence and puberty so what is it adolescence and puberty so uh, now you all know that here we all have been discussing about this uh, character Bujo. He was celebrating his 12th birthday and after his friends left Bujo and Paheli began chatting with their parents. Paheli studies in an all-girls school. She started laughing. She remarked that many of the Bujo school friends whom she met after year year had suddenly shot up in height. So they have increased their height. So his brother's friends uh, whom she met last year, they have suddenly uh, shot up in height. Some of them were looking very funny with hairy line over their lips. So this bird has started coming over their lips. Her mother explained that boys had grown up. So growth begins from the day one a person is born but up to the age of 10 to 11 but there is a sudden spurt in growth which becomes noticeable so the changes taking place in the body are the part of growing up so suddenly in a student of um, seventh and eighth you will see that said there is a certain spurt in height so that is the growth so why there is a certain spurt because they are no longer a child but they are on the way to becoming an adult so Bujo is telling, I wonder how long this period marked ch by changes in the body will last. So how many years will it going to last? So Paheli is telling it is very strange period of life when you are under neither a child nor an adult. I wonder whether this period between childhood and adulthood has a special name. So they are inquiring what is the special name. So growing up is a natural process. The period of life when the body undergoes certain changes leading to the reproductive maturity is called the adolescence. Okay, So this phase when the body is changing into reproductive maturity is called the adolescence. So adolescence begins around the age of 11 and thus lasts up to 18 to 19 years of age since this period covers the teens 13 to 18 or 19 years of age. So this is the teenage till 19 years of age you are in this adolescence phase. So now the, uh, these are called adolescents or they are also called teenagers. In girls, the adolescence may vary a year or two earlier than in boys. Also, the period of adolescence varies from person to person. So this age, it can vary uh, on your physical build, on your mental maturity, on anything that can vary the age of adolescence. The human undergoes several changes during the adolescence. These changes mark the onset of puberty. The most uh, important change which marks the puberty in boys and girls is becoming capable of reproduction. So the first change that the male and uh, the boys and the girls both are having is they are capable of reproducing. They are capable of reproduction. So puberty in boys as well as girls, they become 
capable of reproduction so puberty ends when the adolescence reaches a reproductive maturity so it will end when your adolescent your body will reach an adolescence or it will reach an reproductive maturity is it clear to all of you now again pahli and bujo they realize that sudden increase in height hairy line above the lips in boys were the signs of adolescence and they these uh, suddenly uh, growing of the hairy line above the lips in boys these all have become the signs of adolescence and they wanted to know more and more about the changes in puberty so let us start with all the changes in puberty what we are having so let's discuss that so when we are starting with changes at puberty first we will be starting with the increase in height okay so increase in height the most conspicuous change during puberty is sudden increase in height at this time the long bones that is the bones of the arms and the legs elongate and make a person tall so if your legs are if you have, uh, now and then you are having your shirts are getting shorter your pants are getting shorter that means your long bones are growing right the following chart gives the average rate of growth in the height of boys and girls with age now the figures in columns 2 and 3 give the percentage of height in a person has reached at the age given in column 1 for example by the age of 11, when a boy has reached 81% of his probable full height while a girl has reached 88% of a full height so use this table you can see this table uh, the tallest uh, boy or girl who might be in your class and the shortest you can uh, see just uh, you can see at the age of 12 you have reached 84% boys and girls have reached 91% of their full height now almost at the year of 15 you have boys have reached 95% and if you are a girl you have reached 99% of your height already now till 18 years both of you have already achieved your full height so after that there are very little or no chances of your increase in height is it clear to everyone so calculation of full height in centimeter that is present height by percentage of full height of this age either you are a boy or a girl into uh, 100 so that is the calculation of full height we you can assume that what full height you will be uh, getting so that is a boy is 9 years old and 120 cm tall at the end of the growth period he is likely to be how much height so now the, there is a formula that present height by the percentage of the height at this age what he should increase into 100 so that much meter tall total he will be he or she will be so using the theta of the activity 7.2 uh, now this uh, we can say that in 7.2 we will see the activity 7.1 we have done here right here is the activity 7 point here here the calculation of full height in centimeters we have done so we will do take age on the x axis we are taking age in years on this x axis and we are taking growth in heights in y axis okay so you know in eighth standard you already know that how the uh, the graph plotting is being done so find out highlight the point representing your age at this graph and find out the percentage of height you have already reached calculate the height you might eventually reach tally your graph with that given here okay so uh, age in years you will write here you will plot here what is your age in years and what is your height in centimeter you will tally that so you will tally that and uh, this graph is showing the percentage of height with your age right So initially the girls grow faster than boys but by the age of 18 years both reach their maximum height so this is your maximum height and you will be reaching the maximum height by the age of 18 so the rate of growth in height varies in different individuals some may grow suddenly at the age of puberty and they may slow down while the others may grow gradually so now pahli is worried out i am worried that i have become taller my face looks much smaller compared to my body so what will happen she is so worried so there is no need for worry pahli all parts of the body do not grow at the same rate sometimes your arms and legs or hands and feet for the adolescence looks oversized and out of proportion with body but soon the other parts catch up and result in a proportionate body okay so, uh, so 
all of a sudden you will see your hands are big your legs are growing big your feet is growing so big but all your body is looking small so it's a unproportionate a growth you are having out of proportion but gradually all will catch through you must have noticed that height of an individual is more or less similar to that of some family member this is because the height depends on the genes inherited from the parents right so it is however very important to eat the right kind of food during these growing years this helps the bones muscles and other parts of the body get adequate nourishment for the growth you will find nutritional needs for adolescents discuss later in this uh, lesson that what proper diet you should take we should be filled up with the balanced portion of carbohydrates vitamins minerals and obviously protein which is very important for your pre, uh, bone development muscle development calcium should be there so your body should be having all their nutritional needs so next comes the change of body shape and voice change now next comes the change in body shape so have you noticed that boys in your class have broader shoulders and wider chest than boys in junior classes this is because they have entered the age of puberty so if you are a boy you can see that your um, the your shoulders and chests have grown bigger in this class in 8th standard than you were in the previous class but in girls the waists become wider so the lower part of the body the waists will become wider in the girls the boys the muscles grow more prominently than in girls so in girls the muscles are less prominently distributed all over the body thus the changes occurring in adolescents boys and girls are different so girls will have a different type of shape in body while the boys will have a different shape in body so voice change did you know that sometimes some of the boys in your class their voice crack so at puberty the voice box or the larynx begins to grow so the voice box begins to grow and boys develop a larger voice boxes the growing voice box in boys can be seen as a protruding part of the throat so if you are having a the growing voice box is so large that it can be seen out from outside that is called adam's apple in girls the larynx is hardly visible from outside because it is obviously of smaller size so the girls they have they have a high pitched voice whereas the boys have a deep voice so they have a heavy and deep voice though till 7 6th and all your voice of both boys and girls are same but when you are reaching the stage of adolescence puberty boys boys will change into a deep voice into a heavy voice and the girls voice will be high pitched so the adolescence boys sometimes the muscles of the growing voice box go out of control and the voice becomes hoarse okay so they become very coarse during this time so this state may remain for a few days or weeks after the whole voice becomes uh normal so this is a common uh change of your body of your voice box so no need to worry about that if your voice has become hoarse it is a quite uh, it is a time being for uh, the time being your voice will keep on uh, staying like this but as soon as you reach the stage of 18 your voice will be normal and you will move out of this uh, phase of adolescence and all so you can see this is the dams apple the voice box has grown so large that it is being seen from outside so many of our classmates have hoarse voice now i know why so this is bujo he understood that why many of his classmates are having hoarse voice so increased activity of sweat and sebaceous glands during puberty the secretion of the sweat glands and the sebaceous glands that is oil glands they increase a lot so many young people they get the acne so as your sebaceous glands or sweat glands and oil glands they start secreting uh, um, the oil so what will happen many young uh, people they get acne in your class you will see that many girls and boys they are having pimples on their face at this time because the increased activity of glands in their skin okay so you should keep your face your body your skin clear and development of sex organs so in the previous lesson we have already studied when we studied reproduction in humans uh, we have seen that which show sex organs in humans at puberty male sex organs like testes and penis develop completely the testes also begin to produce sperms and in girls the ovaries enlarge and eggs begin to mature also ovaries start releasing mature eggs so this is the development in the sex organ then reaching mental and 
intellectual and emotional maturity this is a stage when you are reaching your emotional maturity intellectual maturity what are those so adolescence is a period of change in a person's way of thinking so you start thinking in different way so till now your thinking way was much childish but when you reach the maturity your uh, thinking skill will uh mature your emotional maturity adolescents are more independent than before and are also self conscious so intellectual development takes place and they tend to spend considerable time thinking so thinking was not there when you were not adolescents you used to do anything without thinking now you start thinking so your brain changes are happening it is often that the time once life when the brain has greatest capacity for learning but during this time if you are using your brain for many good things your brain is having the greatest capacity for learning sometimes however an adolescent may feel insecure while trying to adjust with the changes of the body and mind but at times might be you are not in a condition you are not feeling well you should share it with your parents with your mother with your father that your mind and body are not feeling well but it is a time for the time being your body should adjust to certain bodily changes physical changes shape changes and it will go over till the age of 18 so there is no reason to feel insecure there are changes and it uh, it is very natural a uh, process for growing up as you are growing from a child to an adult so that change you will have to pass on through and you can learn many things during this phase of life and you should take good care of yourself so now we will stress on the secondary sexual character so let's go to that so in your chapter 6 you have already learned about the testes and the ovaries the reproductive organs and all as we have studied about the reproductive system in chapter 6 they produce the gametes that is sperms and male and ova in female so in girls the breast begin to develop at puberty and boys what are the secondary sexual characters the boys begin to grow facial hair that is mustaches bird and all as these features help to distinguish the male from the female so they are called the secondary sexual characters so these are visible from outside and they are allowing it you to uh, differentiate between the male and the female so boys also develop hair on their chest in both boys and girls hair grow under their arms and in the region above their thighs or the pubic region so these are the areas where the growth of hair is uh, seen both buju and pahili they wish to know with the which uh, what initiates changes in puberty so what are the changes actually why this changes are happening in puberty we should know about the hormones as well so now we will stress upon the hormones which are actually acting uh, in this uh, case so the changes which occur in the adolescence are controlled by several hormones hormones are what hormones are certain chemical substances which are released in the body in the blood and they are uh, released from certain glands and they act on the target site okay so these secretions these are the secretion from the endocrine glands and um we can say are from the endocrine system that is the system which maintains the hormones in our body now uh, in 10th standard you will study this endocrine system in details and full but now what is there we will um, stress on that only okay the male hormone is the testosterone which begins to be released by the testes at the onset of puberty now this causes what are the changes which it is causing it is uh, about which you have just learned that for example the growth of facial hair once the puberty is reached in girls ovaries begin to produce female hormone that is estrogen which makes the breasts develop okay so there are milk secreting glands or mammary glands which develop inside the breasts and the production of these hormones in are all under the control of another hormone secreted from the endocrine gland called the pituitary gland so all these hormones uh, this testosterone this estrogen are under the uh, control of other hormone which is being secreted from the pituitary gland so this in details in 10th in 12th you will be studying but uh, this still here it is under your scope only so male hormone testosterone female hormone estrogen which helps in the breast development in the development of the mammary gland milk secreting glands 
and uh, they are secreted from the pituitary gland as well so we will read in details this also role of hormones initiating the reproductive function now we are here with the role of hormones in the initiating reproductive functions right now as we have learned that the pituitary gland is playing the main function in the release of all the hormones which are in turn releasing estrogen and uh, testosterone right so that is the master gland we will read that afterwards now endocrine glands release hormones into the bloodstream to reach the target site so when they are acting on a tar target site that is when they are acting on the testes when they are acting on the ovary these are the target sites of these hormones so the target site responds to the hormone and there are many endocrine glands or ductless glands in the body okay so let us see what is happening here the testes and the ovaries secrete sex hormones you have just learned that these hormones are responsible for the male and the female uh, secondary sexual and male section male and the female secondary sexual characters so the sex hormones are under the control of hormones from the pituitary gland so pituitary gland is the master gland of our body so it is also called the master gland okay is it clear so it is called the master gland and the hypothalamus you will learn in higher class is the master of master gland so because it is controlling the pituitary in many ways so it is controlling the master gland as well now the pituitary secretes many hormones one of which makes the ova mature in the ovaries and the sperms form in the testes so they are acting on the ovary and the testes which are helping to develop the ova and to develop the sperm so how they are acting so this is the flow diagram we will see how they are acting so hormones from the pituitary they stimulate the testes and the ovaries to release the testosterone in male and estrogen in female so this is released in the bloodstream and they reach parts of the body that is the target site and in turn it stimulate the changes in the body at the onset of puberty so these are all controlled by hormone this is a, a chain of reactions which is happening inside our body and they are all controlled by hormones so see it is not during only the puberty and adolescence that the hormones are working no it's throughout the age now after puberty after you are growing adulthood also so many hormones are acting in your body to control all your physiological metabolism process in your body so that when you move to higher classes you will keep on reading that in details so this uh, constant cycle of hormones is going on in your body but in puberty you start knowing the role of hormones in your body now pahili and bujo they have understood now the puberty marks the beginning of reproductive period when one becomes capable of reproduction and they want to know if reproductive life once begun continues or it ends in some time so this is obviously a question that your reproductive life is starting at the age of 18 so will it end after some time or will it continue throughout your lifetime so this is also a question so reproductive phase of life in humans so adolescents they become capable of reproduction when their testes and ovaries begin to produce gametes that is in testes sperms and in ovaries they secrete the over so the capacity of maturation and production of gametes lasts much longer in males than in females okay so the life of reproductive males is much larger than in females and females the reproductive phase of life begins at the age of 10 to 12 and lasts till the age of 45 to 50 so this 40 years of life they are having their reproductive age the ova begins to mature at the onset of puberty that is one ovum matures and released by one of the ovaries once in 28 to 30 days and during this period the wall of the uterus becomes thick so as to receive the egg so there are changes in the wall of the uterus the wall of the uterus becomes thick to receive the egg in case the egg is fertilized it begins to develop and this fertilization happens and pregnancy happens now if it is not fertilized the um, the released egg the thickened lining of the uterus along with its blood vessels they shed off so the thickened lining of the uterus the blood vessels they shed off and this causes the bleeding in women which is called the menstruation so menstruation occurs once in 28 to 30 days so it's a constant cycle from the age of uh, 10 years to the age of 50 years it's a monthly occurrence it will occur throughout the 
uh, 40 years of this lifespan of the reproductive age and it ends the first menstrual flow is called the menarche which is starting at puberty and the till 45 to 50 years of age and the menstrual cycle stoppage of menstruation is the menopause or at the 50 years of age so initially the menstrual cycle when it starts it may be irregular so at this class at this uh, level at this adolescence phase during 12 or 13 years when you are starting with your menstrual cycle it is the menarche you may have irregular cycles it, it takes some time to regularize but after it is regularized it will be a monthly occurrence and it will just end at the age of um, 50 45 to 50 so menstrual cycle is controlled by several hormones the cycle includes the maturation of the egg its release the thickening of the uterine wall and its breakdown and if pregnancy is not happening it will uh, the blood will flow out and in case the egg is fertilized it begins to divide and then gets embedded in the uterus for further development as you have learnt in uh, chapter 6 how it is developing so how is the sex of the body uh, baby determined so this we are going to learn now so now how is the sex of the baby determined so till now we have studied about the starting of the um, starting of the reproductive life of a, ma a male and a female uh, person so menstruation started and it is ending at menopause so this all is clear to us all right now i have uh, this pahili is telling i've heard my mother and my aunt talking about my cousin who is going to have a baby they were discussing whether the child will be a boy or a girl so i wonder what makes the fertilized egg either a boy or a girl so we should determine we should know that what determines the sex of a boy of a, or a, the sex of a child baby that is it should become a boy or a girl so inside the fertilized egg or zygote uh, is the instruction of determining the sex of the baby so this instruction is a thread like structures those are chromosomes so in a fertilized egg we are having chromosomes so chromosomes are what chromosomes are present inside the nucleus of a cell now all humans we all are having 23 pairs of chromosomes in the nuclei of the cell so two chromosomes out of these are the sex chromosomes so this sex chromosome will determine whether you are a boy or a girl so they are named as x and y so a p female will have x chromosomes that is a female sex chromosomes will be xx and while a male has one x and then one y chromosome so a, a male's uh, sex chromosome will be x and y so the gametes uh, egg and sperm have only one set of chromosome that is the unfertilized egg always will have one set of chromosome but the sperms are of two kinds one kind has an x chromosome and the other kind has one cro uh, y chromosome so eggs will have only in both the eggs are having x and x chromosome but sperms they might have x chromosome or they might have y chromosomes now see in figure 7.4 when a sperm containing x chromosome fertilizes the egg when the sperm is coming it is fertilizing the egg the sperm's chromosome is x the baby born will be a girl so xx now when a sperm is having y chromosome when it is fertilizing the egg having x chromosome as usual the baby will be a boy so this is the sperm when it's contributing y chromosome to the egg at the fertilization the zygote would develop a male child so now you know that the sex of the chromosomes of the father determine the sex of an unborn baby so what uh, what chromosome the father's sperm is carrying to fertilize the egg will determine the uh, the sex of the child that is either it will be a boy or a girl so the belief that the mother is responsible for the sex of a baby is completely wrong and to blame her for this is totally unjustified so nowadays in news in several newspapers you'll be seen that the mother is being tortured for not giving birth to a male child or a baby boy uh, as every time she is giving birth to a daughter this is not the mother's fault this is neither the father's fault as well this is actually depending on the signs of the uh, sperms that is the chromosome which the sperm is carrying is uh, deciding the whether the a uh, baby will be a boy or a girl now how other 
uh, other than uh, uh, hormones other than sex hormones are working that we will discuss now okay now we have understood that the hormone secreted by the pituitary stimulates testes and uh, uh, the ovaries to produce the uh, hormones and you have already learned that pituitary gland is an endocrine gland it is attached to the brain i have told you that it is the master gland of our body it is controlling many hormones now from the pituitary the testes and the ovary there are other endocrine glands in the body like the thyroid like the pancreas like the adrenals these are the main uh, endocrine glands in our body so pituitary location is here thyroid gland is located in the front portion of our neck now adrenal glands are located just above the kidney pancreas are located here you can see here in the abdominal region position the, of the ovary you already know and position of the testes also it's located here so this is a label diagram you just go through it and learn this where all the glands are located now bujo and paheli they had once visited their aunt who uh, it was a doctor and remember that a boy named kaka uh, had a very big bulging throat their aunt told them that kaka was suffering goiter so what is goiter it is a disease caused by the thyroid gland when the thyroid gland is not producing enough thyroxine so generally when it happens it is actually happening when there is iodine deficiency in your diet so we keep on telling you that please take iodized salt so when you are taking iodized salt the thyroxine hormone will put produced will be produced an adequate amount and you will not have uh, this thyroid gland uh, secretion deficiency and no goiter will be there so their aunt also told that their uncle was suffering from diabetes so what is this this pancreas was not producing enough insulin hormone so what does this insulin do so insulin is converting the glucose present in the blood to glycogen which is stored in the excess glucose so whatever excess glucose is present in your blood is being converted to glycogen which will be stored in the liver for future use that is when you are fasting or something that glycogen will again be converted with the help of a hormone called glucagon which will help you to survive on your fasting days okay so insulin deficiency causes diabetes so this whole in details i'll teach you in 10 standards so if you are interested you can move on to the lessons where i have taught hormones or endocrine system for 10th as well you can go through that now bujo and paheli then asked their aunt about the adrenal glands what is also shown in the chart hung on the wall so what is adrenal gland adrenal gland uh, they produce the hormone adrenaline it helps the body to adjust stress and when one is very angry embarrassed or worried this adrenaline is secreted in large amount so thyroid and adrenal glands they secrete the hormones when they receive orders from the pituitary gland and pituitary also secretes the growth hormone which is very necessary for a normal person to grow so when this growth hormone is secreted in large amount we see gigantism in some a uh, person like khali and all and when you are seeing that there is a, a deficiency of growth hormone the puppy person or the people they will become dwarf okay so are there hormones in other animals as well have they any role to play in reproduction yes of, of course there are hormones in other animals as well so role of hormones completing the life history of frogs and insects so please stay tuned don't skip the lesson in between because we will be completing this lesson today itself don't skip in between so that there will be a continuity i don't want to take or drag it on to the next episode stay tuned throughout the episode full this is a little bit is left i'll complete it full and please do keep on subscribing my channel so more interesting topics are on the way to come with your revision work as well so let's move on to role of hormones in completing the life history of insects and frogs so you have already learned about the life cycle of a frog the tadpole passes through certain stages to become a frog this change from larva to adult is called metamorphosis so what is metamorphosis the changes of a uh, in the changes in a life cycle of a frog from tadpole to stay uh, frog is the metamorphosis so metamorphosis in insects is is also controlled by certain insect hormones in frog it is controlled by thyroxine the hormone produced by thyroid as in our body also thyroid is there so thyroxine production requires the presence of iodine in water i told you just now so if the water of tadpoles they are growing does not have sufficient iodines the tadpoles will never become adults so 
tadpoles should stay in that water only which consists of iodine so if you do not have enough iodine in your diet uh, you will have goiter that is caused by lack of uh, thyroxine so just now i told you so you can do this activity you can collect information from magazines or from doctors and prepare a note and importance of consuming your iodized salt you can also look into this information on the internet so what about the reproductive health now as uh, as our physical health as our mental health being taken care of an individual is regarded as an individual's health to keep the body healthy every human being at any age needs to have a balanced diet a person must also observe certain personal hygiene undertake adequate physical exercise during adolescence however these become even more essential as the body is growing so throughout your life cycle throughout your life you should take care of yourself you should take care of the diet you are taking so nutritional needs of the adolescence what are the nutritional needs so adolescence is a stage of rapid growth and development hence the diet for an adolescent is to be carefully planned so if you are not taking a balanced diet your brain will not act properly your physical body health will uh, degenerate you will not have a good muscle mass good body growth you will not grow as required okay and you will not be able to do all the physical activities you need to do so you have already learned about balanced diet recall that a balanced diet means meals that include proteins carbohydrates fats vitamins in requisite proportions are indian meal or roti rice dal pulses and vegetables is a balanced meal milk is a balanced food in itself fruits also provide nourishment for infants mother's milk provides all the nourishment they need so now we are coming to other elements like iron it builds uh, the blood and it is iron rich things are uh, leafy vegetables jaggery meat citrus uh, fruits indian gooseberry like amla is a very good source for adolescents now check out for lunch and dinner and your meal is that a balanced diet so whatever meal is being provided to you at home in your lunch in your dinner you know breakfast just check whether you are having milk meat nuts pulses all the proportions of all um, vitamins and all fruits and vegetables what you are having you are having enough fats also so uh sugar they also give you energy but it should not be in a huge amount so what about fruits and vegetables so they are all protective foods okay so chips and uh packed or tin snacks though very tasty should never replace your regular meals they do not have adequate nutritional value so it is to be kept in mind whenever you are going out and taking out a, a bunch of packet of uh, chips or you are taking out some snacks like which is fried which is Now street food you should not replace that with regular meals once in a while once in a month or one two like in 2 3 months if you are taking uh, one or two chips it's not so harmful but during your growth time you should have a nutritional food which will give your body uh, nutrition to work hard to be uh, to uh, cope up your body with all the uh, emotional and physical changes that you are going through okay So here is another activity make a group of uh, friends write down the items of your breakfast lunch dinner you have on the previous day identify the items responsible for proper growth and also identify the junk food you consumed the previous day so this is all now this activity is very good so get idea from the pictures given below prepare charts and posters and paste them in the class so that you are aware of your diet in adolescence that is meat vegetables fruits uh milk and eggs grains this all should be there in your nutritious diet so what is personal hygiene you should maintain everyone should have a bath at least once every day it is very necessary for teenagers because increasing sweat activity it becomes the body becomes smelly all parts of your body should be washed and cleaned every day uh, if cleanliness is not maintained but there are chances of having bacterial infection girls should take care of cleanliness during the time of menstrual flow they should keep track of their menstrual cycle and be prepared for the onset of menstruation so they should use uh, sanitary napkins or clean homemade pads they should change their pads every 4 to 5 hours or as per requirement so these are all the basic uh, cleanliness you should maintain during this time so what is physical exercise walking and playing in fresh air keeps your body fit and healthy all young boys and girls should take walks exercise and play outdoor games it is very much necessary so don't be very much busy in your studies don't stay indoors always it is not at all good for your health you should stay outside so 
this uh, this are these are the main activities now collect the data on the number of children in your class who exercise regularly who do not exercise regularly and did you notice any difference in their fitness health prepare a report on the benefits of regular exercise now during this time you are supposed to say no to drugs adolescence is a period of much activity in the body and mind which is normal part of growing up i told you earlier also it's not any uh, sudden change or sudden thing it is happening in your body itself it has happened to all of us when we were growing from a child to an adult so it's a phase of growing up so you should not feel confused or insecure if anybody suggest you that you will be get relieved from these symptoms by taking drugs no you should say no to drugs drugs are addictive if you take them once you'll feel taking them again and again and it will harm your body in long run and they will ruin your health and happiness so please stay aware of this and you should not take drugs now you must have heard of aids what is caused what is this aids this is a dangerous disease this virus can pass from an infected person by sharing syringes used to, uh, after injecting drugs as well it can be transmitted to an infant from an infected mother and this virus can also be transmitted through sexual contact with a person infected with hiv so you should be very careful during this age of all these things now another thing is there there are certain myths and taboos do's and don'ts it's being given here please do go through it you should uh, know about this that uh, a mother is responsible for the sex of a child a girl becomes pregnant if she looks at boys during this menstruation these all are just rubbish these all have no meaning no scientific or logical fact a girl should not be allowed to work in kitchen uh when uh, she is having menstruation so these are all just uh, taboos this you came you have come across so many things like this these are uh, there are so many other myths and taboos so just uh, ignore this you are studying science you should be uh, able to think all things logically and reasonably because these don't have any anything to do with uh, science so these you should believe everything with scientific facts only okay so this all we have studied today another thing is that adolescent pregnancy you might be knowing that in our country the legal age is 18 years for girls for marriage and 21 years for boys so this is because the teenage mothers are not prepared mentally and physically for motherhood so early marriage and early motherhood can cause certain problems in the mother as well as in the child so it also curtails employment opportunities for young women and may cause mental agony as she is not ready to take her responsibilities of motherhood so if um, anyone in your locality in your known uh, uh, person is getting married as uh, before the age of 18 and um, uh, before the age of 18 she not she should not be forced into marriage it it is uh, an illegal thing child marriage so early marriage and early motherhood is not at all appropriate for both the health of the mother and the child so these are all the factors which are related to adolescence fake pregnancy So this is all we have completed today's lesson it was a very interesting lesson you all have told me that you want to study this lesson so please do go through it if you are having any queries any doubts please do write in my comment box stay tuned subscribe to my channel and keep on learning from my lessons and thanks a lot for watching these are all the keywords which have we have learned today go through them till then if you are having any doubts you can write in my comment box and please Stay tuned stay subscribed and don't forget to share my channel with your friends as well thank you thanks a lot again for watching my video